the founder and owner of Inspire Play. Um, so sort of a little bit of background about why I'm standing up here and, and what I'm doing. I think it's really important for everyone to have experiences, good experiences, be able to try things and learn, and everyone's passions are different. Um, and I think the more opportunities people have, I don't know, the more likely they are to find that passion in life and to do good things. And there's so many benefits to getting out in the community and, and doing different things. And so because of my experiences and just that, that belief and wanting everyone to you know, be happy and, and do good stuff, um, I, I wanted to find a way to give back to the community. And while I was feeling this way, I was trying to find activities and events for my daughter. We had just moved here, COVID was over, and I don't know how many of you have kids and have experienced this, but there's so many things going on that you can do, but it's hard to know about them, and it's time consuming to check on a bunch of websites and go on social media and sign up for a bunch of newsletters. It's just so disparate, and it's a complicated process. And a lot of what you see, you're not really interested in anyways. Um, so I, I became really frustrated after scrolling through my phone, laying in bed, trying to find stuff for, for her to do, things that I would be interested in. And I realized that that made no sense. Um, you know, as parents and as adults, we don't have a lot of time. Um, budget's a concern. And um, the same thing applies for businesses. They don't have a lot of time to be trying to promote what they're doing on top of already creating these experiences for people. They also have limited budget and um, you know, also as well as the, the expertise of marketing and getting the word out. So the, the fact that I wanted to reach people and they wanted to reach me and we couldn't easily didn't make sense. And so I wanted to bridge that gap. And so I thought that a free customizable activity specific search engine um, that's really truly built as a resource for the community would be an answer to that. So by doing this, I mean essentially picture, you know, Google or Craigslist and you can just say, hey, I'm interested in these subjects for my seven-year-old and I'm interested in these things for myself and be able to see it. There's no algorithm, there's no promoting, it's you choose the kinds of things that you see. Um, so by doing that and finding other ways to help people stay up to date, making that search simple, um, you know, I'd be helping people save time and ease the burden of trying to find those things to do and give people a chance to experience more. Um, it also connects organizations to those people that honor an interested audience, and it provides a very targeted market for businesses to advertise and promote themselves as well. And then one of the things that I'm very excited about for it is uh, when I become profitable, a percent of the profit will go back to organizations that offer financial aid and scholarships so that more people can have experiences and do fun things. Um, so some of the key features, so the, the site is already built. Um, right now there's an extensive search filter that's one of the key differentiators. Uh, there's, a, you know, again, a lot of sites that have information, but there's really none that are nearly comprehensive, and that's my goal, is to be that comprehensive resource, um, and being able to let people you know, filter by a lot of different things. People can also save filters, so it's easy to go back, you know, you don't have to re-choose all the things you like, and then you can also get a weekly email based on that filter. Um, currently, you can also favorite a bookmark, and you can, you know, click the nice, quick little add to calendar, because that's the other thing I noticed. You get the email with all these things, and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to add, and you have to type in the address, and you have to type in all this other stuff, and I, I just don't do it, even though I'm interested in it. So then I forget. Um, and then this, for organizations, they can actually add, edit, and du du duplicate, delete events, whether they add them themselves or if it's automatically added. Um, so that's something I'm working on as well, streamlining that process so that there's no data entry. Um, you know, it's sort of similar to how Google gets that information, and then you know you can do your Google search. Uh, there's also the ability to highlight events, which is a paid feature. Uh, so my journey so far in this process, I'm not a developer. I have learned an awful lot, and I'm pretty proud of what I've built so far. It's certainly not perfect. There's a lot of things I want to add and do differently. Um, and this is my little Rocky montage, uh, my little stick figure Rocky montage. If anyone gets the reference. Um, 
And the, the thing that I'm struggling with probably the most right now is figuring out a revenue model that will work for right now. There's a lot of things that I can do in the future um, in terms of you know adding you know paid features for both individuals and for organizations. Um, there's also the potential to sell the, the database of activities and events to help filter or to help populate other organizations' calendars because there's a lot that do that. Um, and, and there's some, some other areas as well that I could do in the future, but a lot of that requires growth. Um, advertising is another potential option, but whatever I do for advertising, it will become a part of the user experience, not just you know ads you know displayed everywhere. So trying to figure that out has been a challenge. I've considered advertising, uh, and I realized that through I have three audiences. If I do that, I have organizations adding activities, events that I need to build a relationship. Um, plus, I need to build a relationship with you know the people who would be using the platform. And then to add advertisers on top, I'm one person, and I just I was not able to, to do that successfully, so I started to pivot. I'm currently now looking at, uh, so I'm able to automatically add events about once a month right now, and so if organizations want to do that more frequently, uh, I'm considering that as a potential revenue model, so very inexpensive, it's like $2.50 for people who want to do it like bi-weekly. So that's a potential option, but yeah, that's what I'm struggling with the most. There's a few changes I have to make to the site this week, and then I'm gonna make flyers and put them in libraries and daycares and all sorts of places. But uh, my dream for this, again, is for one day for it to be a comprehensive resource. I'm focusing just on Columbus right now, but for, but for it to be nationwide, and so that all sorts of different niches can use this. Um, there's, from talking to people, there's so many different areas, whether it's you know, the Hispanic speaking community looking for people in, in different topics, whether it's finance, um, to be able to communicate in their language. Um, there's also, you know, parents with kids with disabilities and adults with disabilities, and it's hard to find, you know, and, and know that things are designed for them. Um, so there's a lot of different, you know, niche communities that I think this could benefit. And so, yeah, that's why I'm excited and, and doing this. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you this morning. I'm Lakeisha Alexander. I'm the owner of Keynotes Virtual Assistant Agency, where providing a peace of mind while you mind your business is my passion. It all began back in 2020 when many of us were labeled as essential. I want to dive into the meaning of essential quickly. Essential means absolutely necessary and extremely important. But where I was in my life at that moment, I questioned my importance. As the dead end job that I sat in for years, the phone were no, it was no longer ringing, the emails were no longer ringing, and those dry days made me question, what is my next move? Because I knew that I was destined for more. So I started to research about virtual assistants. And after finding that there were many different types of virtual assistants, I was able to properly label myself as a virtual office manager, which is a general VA that specializes in administrative support, scheduling and email management, as well as account management. The research for the market, I just learned that there were more than 200 startup companies here in Columbus, which a lot of them in the beginning stages are in desperate need for a virtual assistant. That was good to know because the agency is definitely expected to have a significant growth over the next coming years. Why have a virtual assistant? Many reasons. You can reduce operating costs, but first of all, I read something not long ago that said tiny tasks can eat major time. So that will free up a lot of time for a lot of people who need to be out and being productive. Also, the customer service improvement. That is major when you're running a business. When you're missing those phone calls, because you're doing too many things with the stack paperwork as well as you need to be out there doing those 
I'm that real-time communication that can keep you up to date. Right now, I have a few different revenues. I've been hourly for a while. I just started my first package deal. Now I'm really thinking how many hours I can offer a month. I no longer by myself <laughs> want to do no more than five. I have two businesses currently, but I don't. Well, I do have the capacity for at least 130 hours a month is what I did learn, which is about 30 hours a week. But I do want an agency to where I have other people with helping hands that want to offer the same products that I want. The startup cost, this is a part of the startup cost because what I need to learn is how do I pay myself? That's the thing about being a virtual assistant. I've been doing it and I'm like, well, I have all these items, but now I need to upgrade it, get better with how I'm doing a lot of things and make it a lot more professional. And my strategy is to gain a, member, a mentorship to learn scalable practices. I'm gonna continue building long-term relationships with my clients, which I do have a few consistent clients over the last two years that have used me over and over again, which feels good. And focusing on developing a strong brand and a community that I plan on starting in June via Facebook, I'm gonna start. So that's gonna be new for me because I'm normally behind the scenes and I'm going to put my face out there more and my voice out there more. And that is gonna be a, a challenge, but I'm ready. Yeah, so. And that community is gonna consist of people in my field other virtual assistants. What makes me different from my competition, which is the offshore providers, is that one, I'm here in person, and I don't just work for you, I work with you, is what I say. I don't work under you, I work beside you, I become a partner in your business. I love to learn your business as well as learn you so that we can both evolve together. As well as one thing that I will say that almost all of the customers that I've worked for, which I actually call them clients, it's been about 10. They all compliment the fact that I'm ahead of the deadlines normally. But that's because I have the time. Eventually I may not have the time. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's me, keynotes. So again, it's Lakeisha Alexander. Do not use this, I just deleted this because this um, QR code is going to take you to your LinkedIn is what I learned and I was having a difficult time from my laptop adding that so I need help on that too. <laughs> so thank you guys. Okay Wesley and then okay. So my question for Keynotes is um, what is your uh, thoughts about automation? Are you planning on integrating automation into your workflow, or are you worried about how it may replace a lot of the small tasks that you're taking? Uh, yes, I am currently working in, on all of that. I'm getting more familiar with ChatGPT and just improving my skill set. And eventually, I'll definitely be set with all of that. It'll become a partner of mine. Um, additionally, like ChatGPT, do you have any plans on like you know Python automation or any like development code based solutions? Like you said, small tasks take a lot of time, and that's what computers are really good at. Those small tasks. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to need help on that. Maybe you can talk to me about that. I mean, I'm a baby in this, so I would love to know more about that. Thank you. Love it. Thank you. Okay, here and then. So for inspiring, for generating revenue now, are there any type of digital products that you can offer to any of your audiences for now? What do you mean? Like what? Maybe I don't know what I would offer. Other some than type of handout or checklist or oh, just something that's oh, relevant yeah. to them. And they download it and they pay for it. You know. Yeah, that's the nurse thought. I had not thought of that. Thank you. I have two questions. I have two questions. Uh, Lakeisha first. Um, what was your previous? What was your previous career that during 
COVID that you said? Well, at that moment, for seven years, I was an office manager for a small pest control company. And before then, it was collections. I was a manager in a call center. So this is the administrative work has been my background. Yeah. It, seemed, it felt like when you were doing your presentation, it sold me on why I might need a virtual assistant for the many different small tasks that I take care of that don't really contribute to me getting to grow my own organization. And so I was just curious if there any kind or if you found, have found previous office assistants and things like that that are also interested in making a transition and becoming a virtual assistant because it seems like, I'm sure you're a great virtual assistant as well, um, but it seems like you have a really strong skill set on selling me as to why I need virtual assistants and probably a good like task-oriented mindset that I would assume and I would imagine there's probably a lot of other people and individuals like you that you could be selling this virtual assistant program to other individuals that maybe the leap is instead of or I'm suggesting that maybe the leap is instead of being a virtual assistant yourself and booking yourself out for 30 weeks, uh, really making a program that finds other people that maybe are in a similar setting as you or a similar situation as you or was in a similar situation as you to recruit them to being a virtual assistant because now, let's say that I need a virtual assistant and I'm interested in paying you, I, I'm taking 10 hours of your time a week when really you could probably just say, oh, my name's Cody. You just say, oh, Cody, I have this person for you right here that I'd love to introduce you to, um, that'll be your virtual assistant, they've been trained by me, they understand our work ethic, yada, 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 and now that person makes $25 an hour and your business makes $35 an hour, I don't know. Um, I absolutely love that whole idea. That's why I wanted an agency, but now that I'm growing through this whole process, by becoming a part of the U, program they have opened my eyes even more and that's why i want to start a community yeah. i want to meet more people and within the last two weeks even yesterday i sat with someone and explained everything with her because she's trying to get out of her position so that's three people that are wanting to learn from me within a matter of a couple of weeks so i am really interested in knowing my um my path to take to become that that teacher yeah well that's good enough yeah it's, it's presented really well for virtual assistant, and I'm, like, once again, I'm sure you're a great virtual assistant, or I'm sure you're a great assistant and office, office manager as well. But it seems like you're much more of like a uh, people manager. I like that. And, yes, and, like, I somebody like that. Would be able people. to be able to sell virtual assistants or, or, or host and manage virtual assistants with, with some of the same competency that you kind of like set yourself up for. I love it. I received that. Um, yeah, she's gonna ask. I just wanted to add because like I was thinking very similarly. I was like, I I wanna like use her right now, but then I'm taking up all this time. Like what is the limit? It's gonna fill up real fast. So I agree with that. Um, and then don't be the answer right now, but if you think about like so I'm in a nonprofit area, how do I convince my leadership that like I should I can add this to my budget? Right? So if you are able to like create something that can help me convince them, that would be that'd be helpful. Yes, let's talk about that, please, and thank you. Um, what was your name, sir? Victoria. Victoria. Um, how do you go about what's what's makes yours different than like that, right? Um, yeah. Go yeah. So, what? Again, I'm in the beginning stages and I'm growing, so I'm gonna answer it a little bit more as future. So let's just say that I'm able to become nearly comprehensive, because that, that's my goal. Um, the difference, the difference at that point becomes the how you can filter. Um, so again, there's a lot of different ways that you can choose the kinds of things you see. Eventbrite also doesn't give you the ability to follow very much. Like you can follow an organization, you can follow those limited categories, but again, it's not it's not very customizable to, to you and your interests. Um, there's also a limited amount of things on there. So if you think about everything that a city's doing and everything that like parks and rec departments are doing, everything that you know the YMCA, I mean, there's a lot that's not on there. And, and a big part of the reason is because they're their goal isn't to be a search engine for activities and events. Their goal is to sell tickets, and that's how they make money. So is, it, is, your, is your event that you're looking for like kids and youth, or, or art and education, or which um, specific, what demographic? Or 
Honestly, ideally everything. And I know that that's not um, the common thing that people want. Um, you know, I, I've been told I need to be more specific, but when you, it, my, my target market right now is parents with children under the age 14, or you know, grandparents, guardians, um, with children under the age 14. But just about anything that you add may be of interest to that group. So I'm not I'm not building it to be for the arts. If you want to find things for the arts, you know, Kappa does a great job. If you want to know things that are the city's doing in Gehenna, the city does a great job of sharing that stuff. The problem is that there's not a centralized place to go for information. And so a lot of things get lost. Um, there's duplicate efforts, you know, around the city. Someone may be doing, you know, a webinar on this. Someone else is doing the same thing. So, you know, joint resources can be put together. And then again, there's a lot of niches that aren't really being met um, because information is so dispersed. And that's, that's what's causing a lot of problems for people. Yeah, I just have one little less small thing. Yeah. There's a website called cringe.com. Okay. Have you ever heard of cringe? No. Um, I think it's run by just one guy here in Columbus. He does, it's like a daily calendar that has all of the like events that are taking place at bars and Awesome. It's, it's really, really well done, and it's really impressive how it populates. There's no advertisements yeah. on it right now, um, but it populates like here's a jazz band at this bar, here's this at this bar, oh, here's perfect. trivia at this bar, here's this at this bar, and so he does stick to a really strict not niche yeah. kind of like art and the, the late night and kind of like date night ideas midweek, and you can just go to whatever date you want, and there's usually activities already posted. Oh, that's um, and awesome. So, and, I, and I think he's the collector of all of that. Like I think he goes out and asks. Yeah. Um, I don't know how he filters it, but cringe.com is something I would check in. It's not fully as comprehensive as what you're kind of looking at, but it does do a really good job of like finding all the events that are taking place in all the bars in Columbus. So yeah. I'm gonna look into it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um so that so what you're creating is is pulling the information from like Google or something. Or like, do you have to have an individual who's like in, inputting all that information? Yeah, so right now organizations can go in and add it themselves, just like on Eventbrite essentially. Um, so you can add it yourself, or I think what's easiest for people is just setting it up to automate. So um, sort of similarly to the way that Google works, um, you know, I, I've looked at a bunch of different options. This is a part of the journey, um, but integrating the software so that the software can just send me the information, um, and then also looking at data scraping as well, which is essentially what Google does. Um, so that's primarily what I've been leaning towards, um, but I'm also doing it in a way that I'm wanting to get the organization's permission to do it first, and their buy-in, and I so that they can go in and make changes as well. Because really how it will work is, you know, SEO is a big thing on, on Google um, and, and other search engines, but on, on Inspirefully, it's how things are categorized. So if someone wants, if, if it's automatically created, I want someone to be able to go in and say, hey, you know, this actually, you can make this more specific, or no, this isn't for ages seven to nine, this is for eight to 10, or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, so my thought as someone who puts out like information events, I'm thinking, what about this is gonna make it easier for me when I'm already putting it on like my social media our social media or our platform or whatever. And then but as a but as a parent or someone who just looks at events, like as a parent, I would love to have something where I can go and it's not um, there's no advertisements. It's not pushing me onto anything. It's just what I'm looking for, and I would pay for that. Um, and also, though, like the things right now I'm noticing with like LinkedIn or other ways where like events are shared. And I'll just bring up Helio because he has a lot of events. But like, there are so many times where you, like you have an event, and I find out three days later that the event is happening based on when LinkedIn wants to show it to me or whatever. And so to have something that is more timely, and I don't know how to do that, but like as a professional. I would appreciate that, like the timeliness of it. Okay. Uh, I guess one, at least one for each. So I, I feel like uh, community is key. You know, so 
people who attend the events that are from your calendar and giving feedback and just kind of growing, growing the trust of the different events. You know, it's, I mean, when you when you said that it could be for anyone, true. You know, like technology can apply, but like your passion hit when you're like parents yes. with kids under 14. Like all of a sudden, I just want. Certain that we all felt that, like whenever you just like nailed it, like we knew that you're the person that we want to trust, you know, with with our plans, you know. So, so I, I feel like I wouldn't be afraid to build a community around that specific niche. Um, but then the other thing that I may disagree with is I don't think towns and cities do enough to. You know, do their calendar trade. Some do, yeah. but Hannah does. Right. So I, I like to say, so, I mean, <laughs> Hannah does a great job. Too. We have our staff. So, I mean, but time. like, you know, I, I, I also feel like that's another potential revenue stream is like departments of tourism and, and, and communities Absolutely. have a budget. Uh, but I also think a membership model could be huge because I, I feel like parents of kids under 14 would, you know, pay to be a member of something that actively supported my needs. So, so one of, um, I, yes, however, the, the reason, I, and I've, I've toyed with this idea too of creating, um, I don't know, I, I really like those models of that pay what you can, like, hey, this is what I'm charging, but if you can't afford it, that's fine. Um, and I, I like the idea of being able to trust people with that. Um, do some businesses do well, some businesses don't. Um, but I, the, the reason I wanted to keep it free for organizations to add and free for people to search on it is because I, I, it, as soon as you put a dollar sign there, it, it ex excludes people. Um, and to have it be nearly comprehensive, I mean, Google doesn't charge anything for you to be on there. Um, and, and that's sort of why they're, you know, they're, they're Google. That's why that, that search engine does well. Um, and same thing to, to be able to search. So I don't really want to block people from it, but I do need to make money. So maybe I, I don't know, maybe I should consider doing, you know, a, a model like that. Well, I mean, freemium is a thing. Right. You know, so I mean, like, yes, access to free, yep. but, like, services. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, paying for no ads, and then, um, oh, so one of the things that I plan on doing is offering the ability to, in the future, have people, I've heard that people want things to just go on their calendar, they don't even want to get the email, they don't want to get this, so like, if you want one million cups, instead of needing to click and add it every single week, yes, I know it's every Wednesday, so you can just set it repeat on your calendar, let's say you couldn't do that, um, you can just say, hey, I want all of these to go to my, my calendar and charge a, a, you know, a small fee for that. There's another um, company that's doing that, but for like sporting events and Netflix show releases and like other stuff, um, and it's, they charge $2 a month. It's, you know, not much. So that's something I'm concerned too, but I, any ideas for revenue, I'm interested. <laughs> so I, I just want, I promise one to read. Uh, at least, uh, I just, my gut feels like hourly is going to hold you back. So, if there's another way to charge people more for the specific tasks that you're going to take off their plate, I just feel like, you know, just looking at people as units of hour, hourly work is what you're trying to sort of get out of. And you know, Wesley was talking about automation. And so, like, every time you find an efficiency that you probably pay for, you get trained for, and all these other things, you know, you're going to want to profit off of that. You're just not going to want to, like, fill those hours, you know, and charge them the same. Because you're constantly learning. So, what, you know, your hour a year from now is going to be worth $200, you know. But if they look at it as a 60-minute chunk, they're not going to pay $200. Right. So... 
Okay, so we do have one last question from everybody, and then we can, for everybody, but we can, we can chat after. Also, it's 10 o'clock, so if you do have to go, we're not gonna feel any kind of way about it. But what, um, what can the community, what can we do for you right now? Well, first I want to say thank you so much for all of your great ideas and just adding more life onto keynotes. So what I want to say is like I'm the heart of keynotes, but I need like the body of keynotes. So I need an advisory board. I need a team. I need those great minds that, you know, come together and really create the most dynamic thing that I'm trying to create that's bigger than me. I need that. So I've been passionate about looking for an advisory board and that is what I've been praying for. Um, that is all I can think about because I know that once I have those people in those places, I can find the proper way to pay myself, learn the way to go about this, learn how to put the dollar amount on, you know. So that's what I'm gonna say, an advisory board. Um, what would be helpful for you is if anyone knows of any parent groups or any you know some specific niches I'd really like to sort of create a small focus group so I can make sure that I'm meeting the needs of you know individual groups as I grow um, and also if you are willing to subscribe to the newsletter that'd be massively helpful because I'm trying to grow my audience and just share this with whomever might benefit from it and if it doesn't have the kind of information you want right now or it doesn't meet your needs I would love to know because again I'm trying to build this truly as a resource um, so anything that you know you might need someone else probably needs to thank you thank you so much we have a cup photo and now it's time to receive your cup for presenting please if you will thank you you go like turns with that side in the back. There. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.